Watch this. Hey, fuck it, let's watch this. Let's watch this. The new iPhone XD, the XD. future of mobile. Hi, I'm Steve Jobs, and I've come back from a cold, dark grave to tell you about our latest innovation. But just before I show you this new phone, I want to tell you a story. It begins in 2013, and we had just released the new iOS 7. It was a proud moment for us, and it all went off without a hitch. That is, until 4chan had an idea. A bogus ad that could cost you hundreds of dollars. They started spreading rumors that the software upgrade made your phone waterproof. <laughs> and they even started making marketing materials that looked like owls. Oh, According no. to these ads, advanced algorithms in the new iOS allowed the phone to detect when water was touching the circuitry. This would then trigger an automatic disconnect of the battery. Of course, this doesn't make any sense. But that didn't stop our customers from trying it anyway. There were a number of news stories. What I did not do, however, was then drop my phone into a bowl of water. Unfortunately, I can't say the same about others. So how close would you get your cell phone to the water? Well... All right, Tony. This is not funny. Thank God we don't offer warranty on water damage. A year later, in September 2014, we were excited to release the new iOS 8. Well, it turned out that 4chan had also been planning to release a new feature, <laughs> Apple Wave. They made another marketing campaign oh that claimed God. even more sophisticated algorithms that allowed the new iPhone battery to be charged by simply popping the thing in the microwave <laughs> for two minutes on high. They claimed that the RF transmitter, which is used to connect to the radio towers, could be used to absorb the microwaves and send them straight down to the battery. People really did this, by the way. And the news picked up on it, too. Yeah, don't put your phone in the microwave, don't put your phone in the toilet. I mean, come on, these, a lot of these things seem they should be common sense. Charge your phone in the microwave feature. Just to be clear, don't ever, ever do that. Now, it's, it's hard to know for sure which of these tweets are real or hoaxes. And some of the news reports claimed that no one actually tried this at all. Ryan says most people haven't fallen, or at least admitted to have fallen, for the destructive ploy. However, these pitiable cries on the Apple forums say otherwise. What can I do if I microwave my phone? Help, iPhone put in microwave and not working I now. know it's stupid, but I put my phone in the microwave. Okay, let's say I stuck my I phone in the microwave. the microwave. Your phone will charge. Drop it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stupid, please help. And even the LAPD <laughs> had to issue a warning after receiving a large number of distressed phone calls. How they were able to call the police, I haven't quite figured out. <laughs> now, the next campaign started only a few days later. On the iPhone 6, we decided to use an aluminium chassis. It was cheaper, lighter, and it looked very nice. But yes, you could also bend the hell out of it. The iPhone 6 Plus I remember that. bends. A lot. So all our hipster customers with their skinny jeans were discovering a nice ass curve in their new phone. Thus, hashtag Bendgate was born. Some other brands took the opportunity to take the piss. Our Twitter got flooded with the same bad accessory joke. <laughs> to prevent damage, <laughs> we needed you to be more delicate with your phones. Or just buy a case. But instead, 4chan was there to make another marketing campaign. Oh boy. They decided that Bend wasn't a bug. It was a feature, and people were encouraged to bend until their screen popped right out. You and you did. Bend it like Beckham, dude. <laughs> they decided that bend wasn't a bug. It was a feature, and people were encouraged to bend until their screen popped right out. And you did. The next two years passed without much happening. 
But then in 2016, we released the new iPhone 7. And courageously, courage. it featured no headphone jack. But one YouTuber, Tech Rax, decided to tell people otherwise. Hidden inside your iPhone 7 is a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And apparently all you had to do was drill for it. <laughs> article after article about people drilling into their phones. But we're just scratching the thin veneer of dumbassery. There was a bug that bricked your phone permanently if you set the date to January 1st, 1970. It ends up with a time before January the 1st, 1970, which should just be a negative integer. Except it's not. It's wrapped all the way round. It's giving you a date 20 times longer than the expected lifespan of the universe. So some idiot <laughs> made a campaign there too. Big lines at the Genius Bar that week. But there's one last thing. We put a tiny seam in the side of your iPhone 6 so that it pulled out your hair every time you put your phone up to your face. I made that design decision. I thought it was funny. <laughs> and all of this brings us to today and your new iPhone. This is it. This is what you get. No more nice things. You can drown it. You can microwave it. You can drill it. And you can bend it. And it'll still pull out some of your hair. Does it work? No. But it's what you deserve. Fuck you, stupids. I'm going back to my tomb. Available in three hard drive sizes. 12 megabytes, 13 megabytes, and 128 gigabytes. <laughs> okay. All right, now let's watch Pools Closed. I'm curious. Please be good. I love Habbo Hotel. Habbo Hotel is my childhood. I remember playing, okay? I played with this girl back when I was like... Fuck, how old would I have been? I don't know. Maybe like... 9 or 10 years old. And I was so jealous because she... Well... Was a girl and got everything given to her. So her house looked insane. I mean, I'm over here struggling to fucking get paid. Couldn't even buy a fucking couch. Fuck. It was a real life girl. Okay, I didn't get catfished, I swear. <laughs> In 2006, a pandemic spread across the world. Extensive research from the CDC revealed the Habbo Hotel pool as the point of origin, likely after someone jacked off into one of the filters. What? Since then, a band of unlikely heroes has worked tirelessly to keep the people safe, to close every pool. What the fuck? Shroud's like one of my best friends. It all started on July 12th. The plan was simple. Create an account, make an avatar, full suit dark God, this game's so good, avatar. I wanna play again. Log in and block the pool. Oh. <laughs> Hundreds flooded in to block the ladders and prevent players from catching the AIDS. They arranged themselves in the standard health and safety swastika formation. Oh, the mission no. was an overwhelming success. No one could get into the pool. But then, another threat emerged. On September 4th, Steve Irwin, well-known animal fighter, was killed by a stingray. Provoked and en masse, intel indicated that many more stingrays were headed for the Habbo Hotel pools. Now the pool was filled with AIDS and stingrays, and most likely those stingrays also had AIDS. Operation September 11th was launched, and once again our heroes marched towards the pools. But it wasn't just the Habbo pool that had people worried. Here's one concerned citizen having their own local pool closed. Uh, hi, um, there's kind of a, a, an emergency, um, I was, I was swimming in the pool and I cut my leg, and I mean, there was a fair amount of blood, and I, I, it's not enough for me to go to the hospital, but I actually have HIV, and I... Vet you are in the pool, like, right now? Yes, ma'am, and I, I, people could be getting infected okay, right I now. Okay, I will, I mean, I'll go shut the pool. You're gonna close the pool? Yep. Okay, thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Pools closed! Recruitment was at an all-time high. Pools were being shut down left and right. 
It looked as if our heroes could really achieve a permanent full shutdown. But then, things took a sharp turn. The racist mods had arrived. They were determined to keep the pool open even though they knew the risks. Bannings left and right. <laughs> this wasn't a war. Yeah. What? This was a massacre. Hundreds of avatars were lost. But our heroes were not giving up so easily. If they couldn't take the fight to Habbo, they would take it to the streets. Yeah. Yes, and what did they exactly tell you? To evacuate the pool. Okay, because of, uh, because of HIV, correct? That's correct. All right. One of the standard procedures is we need you to uh, go ahead and put a sign outside the pool and tell them why it's closed. Right, we're doing that right now. Or um, what are you what are you putting on the sign exactly? Because there are um, due to health and safety. Yeah, the pool's closed due to um AIDS actually. Do we have to specify AIDS? I mean. Yes. Um, okay, pool closed due to AIDS. Yeah. Okay. And, and okay, so who's coming down here? And they're gonna test the water when they come down here. John Robertson. John Robertson from Castle, right? Yes. Okay, it's coming down here. Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. thank you. Okay. Okay, so we just got an entire pool evacuated, and they now have a sign outside the pool saying pool closed due to AIDS. <laughs> but just as the real-life campaign to shut down the pool was reaching its peak, a new fuck? challenger emerged. If the mods were trash mobs, she would be the final boss. Uh-oh. Banned from a swimming pool, tonight their grandmother is outraged. Trying to make sense of a sign. She never thought that after 50 years, her grandkids would be the target of such hate. But this is a sign that one woman who lives in this area didn't expect to see. Mary Alice says when this sign was <laughs> up, the pool wasn't closed at all. And I tell myself it's just a bunch of racist, homophobic geeks ridiculing me. But our heroes weren't about to take it lying down. They found her home phone number and made pleas to reason and logic. Mary Alice received several calls after she began telling her story. I have been sent from the future to close the pool. She would not listen. She knew how to make it all about her, and she knew how to play the media. This kind of stuff is old, and it's ugly, and it's tired, and it's time for it to be buried. According to some websites, this image is associated with a group of hackers who invaded a children's social networking site. Just an online inside joke. A joke is when two people laugh. I'm not laughing. She's not laughing. She was not laughing. During our interview, Altorfer learned of a second flyer at the pool. It's a picture of me with an afro. Police did collect it for prints. When they get tired of making fun of a grandma, Online, they will find something better to do. For months, she continued a campaign to keep the pool open. Intermission. She's not laughing, boys. She's not laughing. Pool is closed due to AIDS. Also, intermission is over. In 2009, our <laughs> brothers prepared for another raid, oh, but no. they didn't know it could be their last. Aww. The racist mods and devs had changed the rules. They allowed avatars to walk through each other. Nothing could ever be blocked <laughs> again. What followed was a series of shitty raids, each more failed than the last, Aww. and the fail gave way to infighting. First, there was a faction of skinheads who split away. Then the Gingers decided to make their own group. Then there was total communist revolution. <laughs> oh my god. In 2010, things only got worse. And by 2011, it looked as though there would never be another successful raid again. These were the brothers' darkest days, and it was almost certain that the pools would remain open forever. But then, in 2012, a ray of hope. Now Channel 4 News can reveal that the children's online gaming site Habbo Hotel is inhabited by paedophiles. Oh no! And in our revelations, one of the company's biggest multi-million pound investors has pulled out. In one quick shift of fortune, it became possible that not just the pool, but the entire hotel could be closed indefinitely. It has been the best part of what, 10 years that Habbo has been going on and within a week, Channel 4 have managed to basically tear that down. Admins muted the whole game for a week. No one could talk to anyone. 
and the player base sank right through the floor. But the best part was, our brothers had reunified. The divisions of the past had been put to the side. They came together to kick Habbo while it was down, and they were coming prepared. Oh no! This is how Habbo died! This is how it died! With their growth in numbers, they didn't need to block. They just had to make a large and annoying presence. And with Habbo's dwindling player base, <laughs> it was easier than ever. I think these people need a little education about the HIV virus. The disease is here. Protect your children. What? I have HIV. I mean, there's my blood is in the water, and there's you know, it's not good, you know. I can't. I got gotcha. you. Well, I, I appreciate you calling. We will take drastic measures. We have uh, hourly testing by uh, management staff. We also have weekly testing of our water. The pool is closed due to AIDS. It's been quite the adventure of highs and lows, pools and aids, pedos and stingrays. And now it's 2017. There will be two great raids this year. July 12th, the anniversary of the very first raid. Oh, no. And December 1st, World AIDS Day. Oh, it's up to no. you whether you want to come along. But I hope to see you there, brothers. Okay, so that's the reason why Habba Hotel died. 4chan killed Habba Hotel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's crazy. It's crazy how much power people have. <laughs> oh my god. It's just like cheats, right? Like if everyone cheated in, in one game. Let's say every single person in Apex cheated. Or like 90% of them. The game would just gone immediately. <laughs>